Hey everyone, Tony here. Hope you're doing well. It's Monday, November 12th. I have some very positive and bullish Ripple XRP news. A lot of great developments that I want to share with you guys. Uh, real quick, I did want to take a look at the market here. Um, we are seeing a bit of a slightly upward trend, um, but still we're, we're in that bear market uh, for sure. And, and of course, we had a bit of a pump last week. And uh, but things are still plateauing a bit, moving sideways. So let's see what happens for the rest of the week um, as we get later in the month of November and then into December, because, you know, people are even myself. I'm still thinking there's going to be some level of a bull run uh, by end of year, especially with the launch of backed coming up. And we can hear some other bullish news, possibly from the SEC. But uh, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. But definitely a great time to be in crypto when we are seeing the infrastructure being built, the big money coming in, big corporate giants, Wall Street giants, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, and so forth. Um, I've always said that back in late 2016 when I got into market, there wasn't this type of news. Uh, so this is really, uh, you know, very new to this market where the big players are coming in and the big money. And we know a lot of them have been buying over the counter as well. Um, and of course, they're going to fill their bags and then they're going to pump this market up and we're going to start seeing commercials and ads and um, you're going to see more integration of crypto into mainstream. So uh, into the Ripple XRP news here. So Ripple and their team, um, and I just want to share this tweet from Warren Paul Anderson, um, who's one of the guys that works at Ripple, but also there are some other folks from their team. Of course, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse were all at the Singapore FinTech Festival. And he tweeted this, uh, Warren tweeted this today, great to be back at the Singapore FinTech Festival running Ripple X Rapid demos that showcase cross-border payments bridging through XRP. Um, so I'm sharing these tweets so you see what's happening that they are there and what's been taking place and then i'm going to get to the the meat and potatoes um so they were just giving, giving demos of x rapid but it was also showing money tap because which was launched by sbi ripple asia which is uh you know a partnership between sbi holdings and ripple and of course we know sbi is part of that 60 bank consortium and uh, a lot of banks in japan are going to be leveraging uh ripple's technology and we know sbi virtual currencies is is powered by xrp and they will be using uh x rapid as well now uh, they tweeted the following sbi ripple asia demoed money tap a real-time payments app powered by ripple at the Singapore FinTech Festival and discuss how it helps Japan go cashless. So Ripple is doing their job, going out, marketing their services, their products, and um, marketing specifically to banks and financial institutions. Now, on to the big news. So at that event, and I'll show you the tweet here, uh, this shout out to Ecent. Um, uh, that's his name that he has on here, uh, his handle. Some of the docs being shared by Ripple at the Singapore FinTech Festival insight to the, into the work they have done with Banco Santar, Santander, Insta Remit, and the latest with XCurrent 4.0. Now, the big takeaway here is XCurrent 4.0. Now, in the past, we haven't been given information. Maybe some of the banks have, but to the general public, we haven't seen information like this, like XCurrent 1.0, 2.0, and what's going on. But this document is very insightful. It talks a bit about um, the, the multi-hop feature, which we've been talking about. Now, just as a reminder, Ripple rebranded all of its three products into a suite called RippleNet. So um, they're majority of the time going to market it that way. And those products are now seamlessly integrated where it allows, um, even if a bank comes on board with XVIA or they start with XVIA and XCurrent, they can end up using XRapid and not even know it, and or they could specifically use XRapid. So this is where Ripple is moving ahead and making it seamless, and that's very smart. We know that Ripple, uh, the folks at Ripple, they own XRP, and of course, they're incentivized for the value to go up, and their goal is to get these banks and financial institutions to leverage XRP. Now, we know XRapid is live. Three financial institutions are slated to go live this quarter, and Brad Garlinghouse says, said dozens next year. But um, let me just call out some of the things here. XCurrent 4.0 brings a multitude of new features and updates and that enable financial institutions to more efficiently send cross-border payments. And they talk about the multi-hop payments. 
uh, new inter user interface, bulk FX. So purchase F Forex uh, in bulk from counterparties on RippleNet. Um, they talk about the API improvements and so forth. And now what's interesting is number six. Increase product interoperability. Seamless access. XRapid for digital asset payments. Let me read that again. Seamless access x rapid for digital asset payments remember what i've been saying for months it doesn't matter what the hell the bank starts with x via x current whatever they will end up be, being able to use x rapid at any time now there's going to be those who are going to specifically use x rapid all the time right based on the corridor based on what their business model is because there's banks and there's money transfer companies like your moneygram and western union the western unions and moneygrams are more going to be using x rapid right um, but you're going to have banks they are going to use XCurrent, but also leverage XRapid. And even if they're just a primarily a XCurrent client, this seamless integration allows them to use XRapid like that. And that should be music to your ears as an XRP holder. Um, this is what we've been waiting for just for, uh, you know, the opportunity for these banks to easily be able to use it. And it's a work in progress right now. Don't get me wrong. XRapid is live, but bringing all this together right and they just looks like they just launched x current 4.0 and uh this is great we can expect more volume as a result of this more uh usage of xrp and very big things are ahead guys now this is making the rounds we're seeing a lot of uh, blogs and so forth are picking it up and and here this article on a daily Hoddle says Ripple says XCurrent will let financial institutions seamlessly access XRP powered XRapid. So there you have it. And they go into the details here. And like I said, guys, it doesn't matter how they start because Ripple's end goal is to get them to leverage XRP. And I keep telling you guys, everyone is motivated by money. You, me, your mom, your dad, the, the people at Ripple, the people in the government. People want to make money. And if you have an asset and you want your company to grow and you want the value, what are you going to do, right? Get them to use the asset, which in the utility will help drive the price up. And also, of course, there's speculation on top of that. And then there's the, the marketing effect and so forth. Um, so it's a very bright future for Ripple. People still don't grasp the business nature of what's happening here. They're still caught up in white papers and then this token move this amount and try to, don't get me wrong. If you day trade, that's your thing. You're making money, go for it. I am more of a long-term holder and I think many of you are as well. Um, but eventually the market's going to mature where it's going to have to be. Where is your utility? Where is your working product? What are you doing? You, you, we can't just say, oh, it's going to do this forever you have to actually have a working product. You have to improve that product. Your product has to be solving real world problems. Yes, we're in the early stages of this market. There's a lot of speculation, et cetera, et cetera. But eventually we're gonna mature. And then when we look at stock exchanges coming into play, you know, like the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, as they start to list cryptos, they're not going to list any random ICO. They're going to start listing uh, cryptos like Ripple, XRP, Stellar, and so forth, Ethereum, right, which have working products which are getting adoption. So this is a very big sign for Ripple here, and I should say a great sign. Um, and as I've been saying, guys, I, and I'm not some fortune teller here. I'm not anything. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is if you put your business logic on and you understand what they're trying to do in economics and making money and all of that. The goal is to get these as many of these banks and so forth to use XRP. That is through XRapid and obviously now integrating multi-hop feature, everything seamlessly connected. It's going to be very easy for these banks to do so. So great, great update here from Ripple and we'll probably end up seeing more of this. Now, if you recall that video I shared from Ashish Birla at Ripple, where he did it on a whiteboard showing the payments starting in XVIA, going into XRapid, the currency is converted, then it comes out via XCurrent. So these, these banks could start the payment however and do whatever, they will most likely end up using XRapid. Uh, I'm not saying all of them will, I'm realistic. Um, but the majority will and Ripple is going to keep pushing for them to use it like, OK, you've used XCurrent. You like our, that product? 
here's X Rapid can give you more, uh, save you more money. They're going to push it. Of course they will. They're incentivized to. And uh, that's why I'm so bullish on XRP. Um, I've shown you guys my portfolio before. It is the majority of my portfolio. I also hold Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and so forth, and a variety of coins. I have nothing against Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever. I believe there will be multiple winners coming out of the market. I believe the biggest will be XRP because, why? Put, put your thinking cap on now, those of you who are skeptics. It has real-world utility on a massive scale, it's disrupting, they're using the technology to disrupt a multi-trillion dollar industry, which is controlled by SWIFT right now. If you can't wrap your head around that, then you need, I, I know people get in, in, you know offended when I say this, you need to go study business and economics. This is crypto moving into the real world, having a real world application. This is clear as day here, if you just research it and just, Go from a neutral standpoint and look at the facts, then you understand what's happening here. A digital asset, a crypto, being used in a product to disrupt and improve an existing process, which is being is done by banks and financial institutions and money transfer companies. Hope you guys get it. Um, now, Brad Garlinghouse, and this is big, he, guess who he was sharing the stage with, guys? Um... We have one of the guys from the IMF. He was sharing the stage with Ross LeCow, if that's his name. Uh, but if it's, that's how you pronounce his last name. And there's a video out there. I obviously can't play the whole thing here with you guys, but I can put a link in the description of the video for you guys to watch the video. Um, this is from uh, Ecent as well. So shout out to this guy. Um, got to put out a lot of content from, from this um, uh, FinTech festival. And... Uh, I'm telling you guys, Ripple is doing some really big things. And I, a lot of people are going to be upset as XRP starts moving up, as the real world utility kicks in. And we're going to see some sort of adoption maybe from the IMF. We know they've been talking to the White House. They've been lobbying Washington, D.C. politicians. Something is cooking up behind the scenes. And... I think it's going to take a lot of people by surprise, not so much the XRP community, because I think those of us who follow the facts here are, are up to speed. But those who are like blatantly saying, oh, Ripple's a shit coin. I'm seeing people, I think, who, who I thought was smart, you know, tweeting stuff like, oh, Ripple's a shit coin. Convince me otherwise. And I'm like, that's that's what you have to offer. Have a logical, factual conversation here. Um, but hey, to each his own. Everybody, um, the good thing is uh, every if everyone was investing in XRP, then the opportunity to make money wouldn't be there for you and I, where um, the early adopters get in, they hold their bag, and as it starts going up, you have the FOMO, and the people are like, damn, I should have bought XRP, and they're going to get in and start buying at those higher prices, and I'm going to sit back and cash in. So um, it is what it is, but uh, I, I the only thing, here's the thing. If someone says, you know, I, I don't want to invest in XRP or whatever, I don't care for Ripple, that's fine. What I don't like is the FUD, the, the, the blatant spread of false uh, news and negative content that is uh, unfounded, and, and Ripple has addressed many of these things. So anyway, Brad Garlinghouse on the stage with the IMF um, had some things to say. He said, next year, banks will provide custody solutions for digital assets. Um, so he made a very bullish statement saying that um, the banks will start holding digital assets. And he said, why did he say that? He said, he saw, uh, excuse me, they see the exchanges like Binance and Coinbase making millions, even close to billions, I think, for Coinbase. And guess what? Banks, and what he said, banks are motivated by profit. Of course they are. This is simple business economics. And they're going to try to make money off of this crypto market. And but what that's going to do is usher in more money into the market and, and make bring crypto into mainstream. That's why I keep telling you guys, hold, hold, hold. Um, and and uh, he, he made this statement that they're going to be holding. So he's talking about like JP Morgan, Bank of America. So they're going to be holding the digital assets. Of course, we're seeing everybody starting to build their custody service. We see Bank of America filing all those patents. Remember, I shared the news with you guys, all of those patents that they've been grabbing up left and right and expect to see Citibank and 
and we know TD Ameritrade is getting in with their um, crypto service. So get ready, guys. It's coming. We got to be patient, but it's coming. Uh, let me see if there's anything else he said that's bullish out of this. Uh, this article covered it, by the way, um, some of the things that he said. Um, he also said, uh, you know, a quote from me, he said, uh, Ripple's PR team said, and I quote, I overstep by projecting that within a year, I have predicted financial institutions like banks will be using XRP in their payment flows. PR team, uh, they said, Brad, don't say things like that. It turns out I was right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I It's coming, guys. It's coming. Be patient. We know three are ready to go live, but let's see what other banks. We, we know three X Rapid customers. Um, and this, he said, you know, earlier in the year, dozens next year. Or so um, straight from the horse's mouth, there's there's no uh, no one hiding here. We don't know who's who and there's no forking here and division among the community. This There's a business that's using a digital asset to improve the world and the way money is transferred, improve people's lives because they don't have to wait forever for money anymore, improve businesses so you can send money faster. And he's clearly stating, hey, this is what we're doing. Here's what's to come. Full transparency. So very bullish statement here, though, about the banks holding digital assets. And I think that's logical. Everyone's going to try to build their custody service now. Um, there's also... Yeah, other articles that picked this up as well, you know, talking about, um, like I said, just before the banks holding it and, and uh, that he he was saying that and the PR team at Ripple's like, dude, don't say that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think Brad was definitely putting that out there to address the FUD because there's so much hate and FUD around um, XRP. And it's a lot from the Bitcoin maximalists, honestly. Um because many of them are very scared of XRP. And, and I go back to the hypocrisy of those folks because who controls Bitcoin? China, the mining hash rate over 50%. Um, right now, guess the, the things that they're against in their mind, so to speak, up against banks, guess who holds the majority of Bitcoin now? You wanna take a guess? Yeah, Wall Street banks, different. They're all coming into it. Uh, this is the thing why I understand. A lot of these Bitcoin maximalists are like, yeah, yeah, we want to make money. Bitcoin's the thing, blah, blah, blah. The only way to get Bitcoin to keep going up is to get the institutional money. Who's part of the institutional money? Banks. Come on, man. And then if they're going to control a large amount of it because they're going to buy millions of dollars worth of it. Um, and that China controls uh, uh, the hash rate. So come on, man. This is a straight up hypocrisy. And Ripple has been very clear in what they're trying to do. They've moved to uh, to be more decentralized um, in, in their consensus network. And how is that set up with different nodes and so forth and validators? So and, and, and they provide a, a better technology. I think that's one of the things that a lot of these Bitcoin maximalists, they like to use these scare words of banks, 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 banks. But they're really scared because XRP is a superior technology. I'm still waiting for Bitcoin to go on the Lightning Network. It's been nine freaking years. And in every everywhere you turn, someone's forking it. And Bitcoin copper and Bitcoin gold and Bitcoin this and that. How can you progress with, with that division and everyone just trying to rip pieces of Bitcoin to make money off of it. That's what's happening. And don't get me wrong. I hold Bitcoin. I believe Bitcoin has a place in the market, but I'm not going around spreading FUD. I call it like it is. If something, if we have to call it like it is facts, right? So um, I know I'm ranting a bit there, guys, but uh, my goal is to address the FUD because there's a lot of nonsense being spread and there's a lot of religious camps and my coin's better and this and whatever. It's not about your emotions or your ideologies. What are the facts? What are you doing? What are you solving? Do you have a working product? Who's using your product? You know what I mean? We're going to mature eventually in this market, and all this nonsense is going to go away, but it's so annoying at this point. Um, there's a Thai crypto exchange called Talk, talk.com, and they just listed XRP. So they said, dear users, Talk exchange uh is listing xrp you can start xrp deposit and withdrawal november 13th etc etc uh, so continued adoption and integration of xrp on exchanges worldwide with fiat pairing 
And this is great because this is going to help meet investor demand, especially when, guess what? Banks start going live with X Rapid and the volume kicks in and the news gets out there and it starts pumping. Um, it's it's it is going to be a lot of FOMO, guys, but that's great for us who are holding the early adopters. And I like I, I've said before, I believe XRP will capture the number two spot from Ethereum permanently. Will battle Bitcoin for number one. Um, and as it comes, to, you know, Ripple and XRP come to full maturity, where you have a significant amount of banks, you have the Spring Initiative, you have um, Codius Live. It will take the number one spot from Bitcoin. I absolutely believe that. Why do I believe that? I'm making an educated guess because I'm looking at facts. I'm looking at utility. I'm looking at real world adoption. That's what I'm basing on, not my feelings. I'm basing on logic and, and business here and economics. Real world adoption in a multi trillion dollar industry. Um, and, and uh, you know, I hope you guys continue to hold your XRP. Don't get become impatient. Um, very big things are to come. I, as I've stated before, don't become that Wall Street statistic of the psychology, right? Of people becoming dis distressed, despair, and depressed, and then they sell off, and then they end up FOMOing back in as the market rolls back up. Markets move in cycles. We are in a bear market. This is a very young market, so there's a lot of volatility. There's also a lot of manipulation. Once you keep these things in the back of your mind and understand these core principles, that then you can sleep well at night, not worry about the price. Oh my God, it's not moving, it's not moving. Be patient. Um, the people who got in early in the dot-com tech stocks early in the 90s did very well and made a lot of money. Even those at later times when they got into, you know, when companies went public like Google and Amazon and so forth. Um, so this is our... Uh, as Ronnie Mo has said at World CryptoCon, if you miss Google and Amazon, this is your Google and Amazon. And I absolutely believe that. And I'm not going to miss out. I'm buying the dips. I'm not a financial investment advisor. You do your, what, what you need to do. Do your own research. But personally, I'm, I'm filling my bags, uh, buying the dips as much as I can. Um, and like I say, I hold a variety of crypto, but I'm most bullish in XRP. Why? Not because I my feelings or I love the company or the logo because of the utility, because of the use case. Um, anyway, guys, what do you think about this? Uh, a lot of great stuff, a lot of big things happening here. Also, um, get ready for Brad, remember, to be in China for the Money 2020 conference, November 14th through the 16th, I believe, so next couple days. Um, and remember, what just happened, American Express just got the okay to partner with Lian Lian in China to provide credit card services. And of course, American Express is a Ripple partner. They are an ex-current client. But what did we learn today? What did we learn today? That doesn't mean anything because at any point, American Express can seamlessly hop on to XRapid. What currency is in China? Is it the U.S. dollar? American Express is a U.S. company. No. So there's going to need to be what? A bridge asset to convert that and, and provide cost savings as well. Hope you see the big picture here. Anyway, guys, leave your thoughts and comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Links in the description. If you find this video helpful, share it with your friends and family, my channel. Uh, appreciate the support, guys, and I'll talk to you all later.